Hello friends, hi, I'm Dr. Shonali Chandra and I welcome you all yet again to our channel Medicine Decoded on which today I'm going to discuss the pathology of iron deficiency anemia. In our last video, we talked about iron metabolism. We talked about how the body maintains normal iron levels, how the body maintains iron stores and now we're going to talk about how and what happens in iron deficiency anemia. Now let's get started and talk about the first question that what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia. Now broadly the most common worldwide the most common cause of iron deficiency is nutritional. Simply the diet is deficient right. Now the diet can be deficient for a variety of reasons right. I mean the diet could be deficient because of a broadly set up malnutrition, right, uh, poor socio-economic conditions, right. So, anemia it is not just a disease of the pathology, but also the socio-economic conditions also, you know, contribute to the development of iron deficiency anemia. Like for example, there can be a situation where, you know, certain dietary habits which can, you know, lead to more uh, pro propensity for iron deficiency anemia, maintaining uh, particularly uh, complete vegetarianism or moreover, you know, even when doing eating vegetarian diet entirely, if your diet is not consisting of, uh, of the good vegetable sources of iron, you know, then of course there can be over a period of time iron deficiency can set in. Now, malabsorption, even if you maintain a good diet, but you know, iron is absorbed from the duodenum and upper jejunum and if there is a chronic intestinal condition that can lead to malabsorption of all the nutrients then malabsorption of iron can also take place. Increased demand, another very very important cause I mean there are certain time periods in our life where naturally the demand of iron in, is increased by the growing tissue. So periods of growth right like infancy right now infant is infancy is a period of rapid growth and an infant who is entirely breastfeeding especially in the first six months of life i mean breast milk mother's milk is a poor source of iron and infancy being an at risk period secondly uh, there could be adolescence okay that is another period of growth and finally pregnancy when the demand for iron is increased right so what do we realize we realize that iron deficiency anemia or iron deficiency is a condition which just perpetuates with time you see children born to poor socioeconomic status conditions children born to women who are maybe not able to breastfeed not able to wean the infant properly not able to provide good sources of diet to the newborn to the infant compromises the iron stores of the infant when that infant becomes an adolescent during the period of growth, childhood growth and reaches adolescence and suddenly there is an increased demand of iron the stores are further compromised the stores of iron are not built up those adolescent young girls when they become pregnant they enter pregnancy with pre-existent deficient stores and that is how this problem persists and perpetuates right now moving on further let's talk about the other cause blood loss now the blood loss that can lead to anemia could be an acute blood loss like uh, plain and simple you know there can be uh, an acute uh, trauma or acute accident and that's led, led to hypovolemic shock and uh, the person has a lot of considerable amount of blood leading to a sudden acute development of anemia and consequently hypoxia which is then treated with blood transfusion immediately so one uh, sort of blood loss can be acute the other sort of blood loss can be chronic blood loss that perpetuates over a period of time now there can be various forms of chronic blood loss i mean there can be blood loss from anywhere along the gi tract anywhere along the gi tract right so understand in societies in high income societies right in developed countries the one important another important cause the diet might not be a very important source of uh, anemia in high income societies all right but 
chronic blood loss becomes a very very important cause in those societies right there could be gastritis there could be gastric ulcer there could be melina there could be uh, some gastrointestinal tumors right i mean those could be the causes or there could be causes pertaining to gynecological causes in women there could be excessive bleeding heavy menstrual bleeding and number of causes could be related to that so chronic blood loss now another form of chronic blood loss but in lower income countries right in lower socioeconomic strata people that could be a hookworm infestation very very important hookworm infestation that can lead to chronic blood loss from the gi tract right so broadly these are the causes which you should consider when evaluating any patient with uh, iron deficiency anemia now moving on further let's talk about and let us understand what happens because of iron deficiency and our last video we had ended at this note that iron absorption is increased it's maxed out whatever the body can do you see body behaves in a very beautiful way i mean it it's and the more i read about the human body the more i'm fascinated with how many avenues of adjustment and compromises and you know and uh, maintaining the balance or homeostasis exist in our body so we realize that the body increases the absorption of iron it can increase it as much as it can mobilizes the iron stores but you know the losses of iron are continuing the demand of iron persists and the diet is not able or the increased absorption is not able to meet the demands right so the demand outweighs even after the mobilization of stores the demands are not met so what happens here at this point in time is what we call as a state of negative iron balance and during this time what happens is that there is depletion of the stores the stores continue to get used up right however the red cell morphology the red cells if you look at the red cells they are normal in appearance if you look at the red blood cell indices we am going to talk about them later nothing changes there as well they remain normal if you look at the hemoglobin concentration that also remains normal because the hemoglobin concentration and the hemoglobinization of the rbcs is continuing because of the mobilization of stores so stores are being used up right the body is in a state of negative iron balance the serum iron levels are maintained because the body is absorbing iron so serum iron levels are normal right the transferrin saturation the right the plasma transport protein remember transferrin that is in saturated normally so the transferrin saturation is normal the only reflection of iron deficiency at this point in time which is considered the most sensitive indicator of iron deficiency is serum ferritin because it reflects the uh, uh, it reflects the uh, stores of iron so it is the serum ferritin which starts to fall or decline at this stage of negative iron balance here right now moving on further what is the next stage what is the next stage let's say what is the next stage the next stage is iron deficiency erythropoiesis if no correction for the deficiency is made at this point in time a state will come where your erythropoiesis that means red blood cell formation is going to continue despite an existing iron deficiency because the body needs to have rbcs the body needs to have hemoglobin in the rbc so the rbc production continues in an iron deficient state at this point in time what happens the body's capacity to absorb iron is overwhelmed and whatever iron is in the stores is being continuously used up towards the you know erythropoiesis so serum iron concentration starts to fall here right and your total iron binding capacity 
you see the absorption is of iron is maxed out whatever iron is being absorbed is binding to the transferrin right so the total iron binding capacity also increases here at this point in time very very important very very important to note that the total iron binding capacity increases in cases of iron deficiency right now moving on further what happens to the transferrin saturation transferrin saturation is measured by this formula serum iron divided by the total iron binding capacity multiplied by 100 so your serum iron levels are falling your total iron binding capacity is increasing so what is happening to your transferrin saturation it is falling so the transferrin saturation starts to decline so on an average at any point in time in normally your transferrin saturation normally is on an average about 35 percent there's a range okay there's a range about 20 to 50 percent but on an average it is about 35 percent it falls below that your hemoglobin concentration still continues to stay normal still continues to stay normal right it is when the transferrin saturation will further drop down to about 15 to 20 percent when it will drop down to less than 15 to 20 percent then your hemoglobin synthesis starts to decline starts to get affected once the transfer is, transferrin saturation falls below this threshold once that happens the first evidence of this situation first evidence of anemia will also start coming in the peripheral smear in the form of under hemoglobinized rbc right now moving on further let's say no correction is given even at this point right the diet does not improve the losses continue the stores keep getting mobilized and used up and depleted a state will come when there will be frank iron deficiency anemia and the patient will start to show signs and symptoms of anemia signs and symptoms of anemia like fatigue some non certain non specific symptoms like fatigue difficulty concentrating right irritability sometimes right just lethargy a general sense of um, not feeling well you see sometimes in cases of severe anemia there can be uh, a situation where there is a taste for abnormal or unnatural things like that is called as pica i mean sometimes people uh, students uh, sometimes and you know children tend to eat they are very fond of eating chalk so i say unnatural things that there's a propensity to start eating them so that can be there and um, also your signs could be there there could be visible pallor right so paleness of the skin can be there but that would be a late change in the early on the uh, paleness can be appreciated in the palpebral uh, conjunctiva of the lower uh, eyelid there can be a pale tongue there can also be a glossitis you know of the tongue atrophic and a pale tongue other than that you know if the palms are very white right if the palms are too white palms are too pale that could also be a sign so varying degrees of pallor could be there in cases of iron deficiency anemia or any kind of anemia so the symptoms and signs will also start to be evident at this point in time you measure the hemoglobin the concentration will now start to fall so the hemoglobin concentration decreases right so in males hemoglobin less than 13 gram per deciliter is iron deficiency anemia and in females a hemoglobin concentration less than 12 gram per deciliter is anemia right there are various causes of anemia in this video we are considering iron deficiency anemia particularly so what happens to your hematocrit and packed cell volume so i wanted to you know talk about these terms because you know in our uh, routine clinical practice or routine clinical uh, case scenario based readings or for that matter appearing for examinations we tend to mug up these things and then we tend to get confused because you know you have to differentiate between the various types of anemia as well so iron deficiency being one of them 
So I picked up that to discuss. But I also want to take this opportunity to clarify certain very, very basic principles about what exactly is the hematocrit or the packed cell volume. So you see here the blood contains of plasma and the cellular products, right? The red cells, the WBCs, and everything. So when we're talking about hematocrit or packed cell volume, we're talking about the entire volume of RBCs in the circulation and measuring that volume in relation to the measure, measurement of the plasma volume, right? So what happens to the hematocrit, you see? What happens to the hematocrit is that it falls. Hematocrit decreases, the volume of RBCs in totality, the packed cell volume, it decreases. Now, volume of RBCs could decrease because of two things. The volume of, of entire RBC in circulation could decrease because of uh, each and every individual RBC is now particularly smaller in size. That could be the reason. Or the RBC count, the number of RBCs in the circulation have also declined. Now, usually in mild to moderate cases of iron deficiency anemia, the RBC count is usually not affected in the initial stages, but prolonged and severe and later stages of iron deficiency, then you know the uh, bone marrow can enter into a hypoproliferative stage and then the RBC count might get affected but in later stages, right? So these are the reasons why your hematocrit is going to fall. That what happens to the transfer in saturation? At this stage, the transfer in saturation is less than 10 to 15 percent. What happens to the serum ferritin? Less than 15 microgram per deciliter. If that's your value of serum ferritin, that means the stores have been completely de depleted. Completely depleted stores. At this point in time, if you check the peripheral smear, that's what I told you. The RBCs are smaller. They are microschitic. Alteration in the size. Microschitic. Smaller in size. And how do we know this size? I mean, this is a small lymphocyte. This is a small lymphocyte. And we check the size of the nucleus of the small lymphocyte and compare it with the size of the RBC. So the size of the RBC is smaller than the nucleus of the small lymphocyte on the peripheral smear. That will give you an idea. And you can see the central pallor. The central pallor in this under hemoglobinized RBC which is usually more than one third the area. Right? So, what happens? Microschitic alteration in size, smaller and hypochromic. And hypochromic, pale looking, under hemoglobinized. Right? So, what is the kind of anemia that we get on peripheral smear? Microschitic hypochromic anemia in a case of iron deficiency. Now, this is the entire picture that will evolve. Over a period of time, the deficiency of iron will go through with three stages. First, there will be a stage of negative iron balance. Then there will be a stage of iron deficient erythropoiesis. And finally, there will come frank and iron deficiency anemia with its signs and symptoms and the various features which can lead to lab diagnosis of the iron deficiency. So when we have to diagnose iron deficiency, we take into consideration the signs and symptoms, right? Obviously, when we have to diagnose anemia, we check the hemoglobin concentration. We go for a complete blood count. We see the RBC count, right? We check the hematocrit as well, right? And the next step in the case of anemia is trying to find out what kind of anemia is it? Is it iron deficiency? Is it a folate deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, what kind of uh, deficiency it is or you know whether it is a hemoglobinopathy. I mean you read your pathology textbooks, it is filled with a variety of causes of anemia and you have to make that diagnosis for correct treatment. 
so you go ahead and check the rbc indices you go ahead and check the rbc indices the red cell indices right and nowadays if you check the blood report you see all you have to do is take a blood sample send it for the lab see the report values of uh, mcv mch mchc they come directly right and mar examiners were fond of asking that if you don't have that coulter monitoring if you don't have that apparatus can you not check for the mcv mch and mchc and we would be like is it possible yes it is possible possible because all you need is the rbc count all you need is the hematocrit and hb values to delineate these red cell indices mcv stands for mean corpuscular volume given by this formula mean corpuscular hemoglobin right that means the average mean means average so average uh, corpuscular means a single rbc and hemoglobin means the amount of hemoglobin a single rbc contains on an average that's the mean corpuscular hemoglobin mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration that is the other thing that you have to see so it is given by these formulas you can calculate them you can note them down the average normal values have written down here for reference however yes they will be slightly different in males and females okay but these are the average values and all of these parameters are going to decrease in iron deficiency anemia right now why am i telling you about iron deficiency in anemia in detail is because it is simple it is easy to learn once you know these parameters in light from iron deficiency anemia to this you can keep adding any other different kind of anemia and compare and learn compare and learn right now what did we see hb falls much later these indices also fall much later right the peripheral smear findings appear much later right but what is the most sensitive indicator of iron deficiency the stores start getting depleted very early on so serum ferritin is the most sensitive indicator to check for iron deficiency right having uh, to know about these parameters or rbc indices is important because you want to make the diagnosis of the kind of anemia as well so when you want to differentiate the different kinds of anemia mind you when you come to the differential diagnosis of various types of anemias mind you you need to know in detail about the red cell indices how they are going to differ you need to know about the iron stores how they are going to change how they are going to be affected you need to know about the peripheral smear findings how are they different in different kinds of anemia right so this time we have discussed about the anemia because of iron deficiency another important type of anemia which is important where it can be confused with iron deficiency is thalassemia and we are going to talk about thal trait in detail in the next upcoming videos so i hope you found this video useful thank you so much for watching bye bye and have a nice day any more suggestions please feel free to put them on the uh, messages boxes so happy learning and let's see you the next time guys bye bye and take care